So in this video, we're talking about solution stoichiometry, and now uh, we're going to talk about finding molarity as well as some dilution practice problems. Okay. So what is a solution? A solution is composed of a solute, which is a minor component, and a solvent, which is the major component. Okay. The solvent actually dissolves the solute. Okay. So in other words, the solute is dissolved in the solvent. Okay. And usually, how do you know which one is your solvent, which one is your solute? The bigger number. Is always your solvent okay it's usually your solvent so we have 100 grams of h2o and 25 grams of sodium chloride well in this case the sodium chloride will be your solute and this is dissolved in 100 grams of water which will be your solvent okay so it's usually the bigger number that you can usually tell right off the bat that it's your solvent okay now when we talk about solution con concentration we talk about molarity and this is the idea that capital m which stands for molarity the units are moles per liter okay the units are moles per liter so so again capital m stands for molarity okay and this the units are in moles per liter so my question is what is the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 25 grams of potassium bromide in 1.7 grams uh 1.75 liters of water well again we should know by now that anytime we usually deal with water, that will always be your solvent. And our solute in this case will be potassium bromide. It says by dissolving potassium bromide. So that should give you a cue that that's your solvent. That's your solute. Okay. And so if I'm looking at this, well, if I need to find a molarity, well, molarity is given in moles per liter. We have a liter here. We don't have moles. We have grams. And so if I take 25.5 grams of potassium bromide, I need to find the molar mass. Well, how do I calculate it? Well, I just simply add the molar mass of, bro of potassium plus the molar mass of bromine. And when I add those together, I should get about 119. I should get about 119.00 grams of potassium bromide for every one moles of potassium bromide, okay? And so in this case, when I divide 25.5 by 119, I should get about 0 0.2143 moles of kbr and i'm going to simply just divide this by my 1.75 liters okay notice that i'm in moles per liter okay and so when i divide these the molarity of the of the um of the of the solution is actually 0 0.122 molar okay so this would be the molarity so again my units moles per liter okay and this is how we go about finding molarity. Let's talk a little bit more dilution, okay? So when we talk about solution dilution, here's the, the formula that we need to remember. M1V1 is equal to M2V2, okay? Now, please remember, don't ever use this for reactions, okay? So never for reactions, okay? Don't ever use this formula for reaction. This is only for dilution problems, okay? So let's keep that in mind. So if I take a look at this, well, to what volume should you dilute 0 0.2 liters of a 15 molar sodium hydroxide solution to obtain 3.0 um, molar sodium hydroxide solution? Okay. Well, what I usually do is I read this from left to right and I point out my M1, my M, my M1, my V1, my M2, my V2. Okay. So let's read. To what volume should you dilute a 0 0.200 liter? So this will be the first one that I see. This will be my v1 that's a volume should you dilute a 0 0.200 liter of a 15 molar so this would be off so this would be m1 so in this case this would be m1 okay to obtain a three molar so this would be m2 to obtain a three molar sodium hydroxide solution okay so essentially we're solving to what volume? Well, this has to be V2. So essentially we're solving for V2. Okay, so again, reading from left to right, all I do is just, I'm just giving my M1, V1, M2, V2. So again, if I look, the first thing I hit is a volume, so that would be my M1. So what volume should you dilute? A 0 0.20 liter of a 15 molar. So these two correspond to each other. And essentially, I have a three molar here, which would be my M2. And so since we're solving for V1, okay, V2, I'm sorry about that. And so if I look at this, well, my M1 happens to be 15 molar, 15 molar. 
So that's M1. I'm going to simply multiply that by V1, which happens to be 0 0.20 liters. And that is equal to M2, which is 3.00 molar times V2. Okay. So you can see that all I'm doing is just multiplying these and then ultimately dividing by, by 3. Okay. It's ultimately divided by 3. And let's do everything at once. So in this case, V2, I'm just going to divide by 3. So V2 is equal to 15.00 molar times 0 0.200 liters divided by 3.00 molar. Now notice everything has been multiplied. So when I actually do this, my molars and my moles will cancel out. Okay, and the only thing I'm left with is liters, which would make sense because we're solving for the volume. Okay. And so if I put this in my calculator, this would be approximately 1.00 liter. So that's what V2 will be equal to. Now I want to make some a very important point here. Be careful about your units. Okay, be careful about your units. If, if this was given in milliliters instead, I had to convert to liters. And the reason being is because molarity is in moles per liter. Okay, so be careful of your units. I want to take a look at one last problem. Okay. So I have this balanced chemical equation here. Okay. And the question asks, well, what volume of a 0 0.175 molar sodium phosphate is needed to react with? 95.4 milliliters of 0 0.102 um, CuCl2. Okay, how do we how do you go about tackling how do you go about tackling this problem? Okay, so let's think of it again. What volume? So we're solving for a volume. We're solving for a volume of sodium phosphate that is needed to react with 95 milliliters of. Um, of a 0 0.102 molar CuCl2. So the first thing I the first thing I like to do in this case is to start with what's given. So I'm start so I'm given that it's needed to react with 95.5.4 milliliters of CuCl2. So in this case I'm thinking about starting with my volume using the molarity as a conversion to go to moles of CuCl then using my balanced chemical equation to go to sodium phosphate, using my balance equation to ultimately go to sodium phosphate, and then from there I could use this molarity to get to its volume. Okay, so let's look at so let's look at the process. Okay, they're asking for what volume of sodium phosphate we need when we're given a volume and the molarity of CuCl2. Okay, and so if I take a look at this, well, if I start with ninety five point four milliliters of CuCl2. Well, I need to get the liters first before I could get to moles. And so for every 1,000 milliliters, I get one liter. Okay. CuCl2, CuCl2. And then using its molarity, this is a conversion unit. So for every 0 0.102 moles, I get one liter. So be careful, okay? And so in this case, for every one liter, I get 0 0.102 moles of CuCl2 okay and then now to get to sodium phosphate I need to use my balanced chemical equation okay and so if I look at this for every three moles of CuCl2 I get two moles of sodium phosphate so in this case my two moles of C, uh, three moles of CuCl2 will go on the bottom and my two moles of Sodium phosphate, we're going to talk. Okay. And so now when I plug all this into my calculator, I should get the number to be around 0 0.006847 moles of sodium phosphate. Okay. Now we're in moles of sodium phosphate. We need to get to the volume. Okay. And so how do we do that? Well, because we have its molarity, this is a convergent unit. And so molarity is given in moles per liter. So I need to get somehow to, to liters, to, to liters for uh, for this first. And so if I use its, its molarity, well, I know for every 0 0.175 moles, I get one liter. And so for every 0 0.175 moles, 
of sodium phosphate, I get one liter. Okay, I get one liter. And then again, because we started with milliliters, I'm just going to convert this to milliliters as well. So for every one liter, I get 1,000 milliliters. And so if I put all this in my calculator, I should get around 37.1 milliliters of sodium phosphate. Okay, so the process is what I want you to take away from this.